Hi, this is Lou Pulsfer, and I'm going to talk about something that's fairly close to my heart, devising role-playing game monsters, do's and don'ts. And this will be in two parts because it's going to be fairly long. Now, what expertise do I have in this? Well, in the 70s and 80s, I made up a lot of monsters that were published in White Dwarf and Dungeon Magazines, as well as for my own campaign. I designed several monsters that are in the original Fiend Folio. The Princes of Elemental Evil are particularly well known, and they even have their own entry in Wikipedia. I'm also relying, in this screencast, on a panel discussion I attended at Gen Con 15 early on a Sunday morning with, among others, Wolfgang Bauer and Jeff Grubb. Now, I'm talking about monsters more or less for tabletop RPGs because there's a big difference between tabletop RPGs and video games. In video games you have the boss mentality. Boss monsters. Really big badass monsters that are very very dangerous. I have never thought in those boss terms and I'll explain quickly soon how, why. I've always used a large number of monsters in a big climax led by some powerful leader, but the leader is not individually nearly as powerful as the character group. It's just that with all the other monsters around, they become very dangerous. The big difference here is that in tabletop RPGs, unlike video games, if you die, you don't have a save game to go back to. Video game bosses are designed with the idea that there's a save game to go back to. They're designed to kill you several times before you succeed. You can't play tabletop RPGs that way, even today with all the easy healing, because if you die, you're dead, more or less. So in video games, the purpose of the monster is often to kill the characters the first several times. Whereas in tabletop, the purpose is to scare the snot out of the characters by threatening them in some way, but not by killing their characters. That may happen occasionally, but it can't happen frequently, or you're not going to have a game. You're not going to have a campaign, certainly. So a video game boss tends to be much tougher in relation to the adventuring party or individual than the monsters you meet at a climax in a tabletop RPG. This is a fundamental difference. Video gamers would be disappointed if almost every time they hit a climax they won the first time. They'd feel cheated. They'd feel it was too easy. It's a matter of expectations as much as a game functionality. Of course, there are many ways that tabletop RPGs are unlike computer RPGs, and many of that is because of the lack of, of saved games. So, when we're making up monsters, I think you should focus on the element of surprise, not on just making them super tough. Some game designers, and this includes Kinezia and Miyamoto, I think, certainly Miyamoto, say that the major objective in any game is to surprise the players. So perhaps the most effective way to design RPG monsters is to surprise the players and many of my suggestions derive from surprise. Of course, surprise, by and large, is only going to work once, but that's one reason why so many people keep making up new monsters to provide new surprises. So what are we going to look at? This is a long list. I'm going to go through each one individually, so I'm not going to repeat them here. A long list of possibilities, and I'm sure there's others that it, perhaps I haven't thought of. The unknown is the first one. Again, a major reason to make up new monsters is to surprise the players with something they don't know. The players will probably feel it's more fair and perhaps more true to life if they can divine some of the characteristics of the unknown monsters, even if they don't know all the characteristics. They can derive them from fast experience or from appearance. If it looks like a giant, it may be about as tough as a giant. Sometimes it'll be just one unusual characteristic. 
This may work particularly well if you take a well-known monster and give it a single surprising quirk. Now, the obvious one that comes to mind is regeneration. Regeneration is very powerful, but if you have an ordinary monster that regenerates, that's going to surprise the heck out of players, especially when that monster gets back up off the floor. But you can do that single characteristic with a, uh, as a focus of an unknown monster as well. Now, some refs don't want to go to extremes such as flying orcs or regenerating orcs. On the other hand, we don't mind the flying monkeys from The Wizard of Oz, do we? I made up a group of several kinds of lightning-spitting monsters, roughly analogous to military tanks, in my mind, although the players never realized that, I think. They were big, and they looked dangerous, and they were, even without the lightning. The cat-like ones were fast, the slug-like ones were really hard to kill, and so on, but it was the lightning that set them apart and scared the players the most. And we'll continue this in part two.